In my previous videos, I've shown you how to build the AM subwave. And finally, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build an FM, which is ultra subwave radio. So this radio is made of the coil, made of copper wire, and also a, an air variable capacitor made of copper, and the universal 3DQ crystal radio module. The audio output of FM crystal radio is very low, so you will need to turn up your volume to hear the next part of the video, uh, which captures the output of the FM crystal radio. I recorded this video using the microphone of the iPhone that is pressed against the crystal radio earbuds that I used, so no amplification is used. That's why the output is quite low. You may want to turn up the volume to hear the testing. To make an FM crystal radio, you have to first determine the frequency range, then choose the tuning method. We'll choose the variable capacitor at this time. Then we do some calculation to find out the inductance and the capacitance required. And then we can make the coil and finally connect it into the circuit and test. We'll be using the same universal 3DQ crystal radio module that we made in the past videos. If you missed that, Follow the link in the description and we watch that part. The FM radio uses frequency starting from 88.1 MHz to 108.1 MHz. It may be slightly different depending on your country and also on your application. Some universities also run an in-house campus broadcast system with FM radio broadcast starting from 76 MHz. There are some aviation communications also using frequency at 121 MHz, but these are broadcast in AM, amplitude modulation, instead of FM, frequency modulation. The frequency range of FM radio actually falls under VHF, very high frequency range. So when you hear a radio signal on VHF, it may not be always broadcasted in frequency modulation. It could be sometimes in amplitude modulation, such as those used by pilots. The first method is to vary the inductance. You can use a syringe like that and press and extract the copper wire coil to vary the inductance. I've made a video for such a radio. You can go and check it out. And it's not too effective, you can only cycle through half of the range of the FM stations. It's still an interesting experiment to do, to see how this works. Good quality variable capacitor, uh, that is air-gapped and also made of copper, with a high quality, is very hard to find. You can make one using this type of copper plate. Just make two place the sliding in and out of each other with sufficient surface area so you can create the capacitance you need. The other easier method is to find two pieces of copper pipes, a big one and a small one. Put a small one inside a drinking straw and then push it in and out of the bigger one. Then you'll be able to find a variable capacitor with the right minimum and maximum capacitance according to the length of the part of the pipe that overlaps one another. I've made a proof of concept setup using a C-shaped pipe and then I insert a smaller pipe in between, push it up and down to the radio. Reception quality is very good. If you're interested, you can watch the video in the description. If you are buying off-the-shelf variable capacitors, you must choose the high-quality ones. Uh, 
the plastic ones probably won't work. You need uh, the air variable capacitor made of copper with a range of from about 5 pf to about 25 pf or 15 pf depending on how big the coil you need. Though this one is made of aluminium, this one is also high quality. It's called butterfly variable capacitor. You can use it for FM crystal radio. For our project, we will use this high quality air copper variable capacitor. I will put a link at the video to show you where you can find it. The range is from about 25 pf down to about 5 pf, which is sufficient to cover the FM frequency range. I found 25 pf uh, capacitance too big, so I take off two of the plates at the top and to reduce the capacitance to maximum 15 pf. Alternatively, you can just keep the same capacitance, 25 pf, and make a smaller coil. You can buy two different types of variable capacitors from the market. The first type is a smaller maximum capacitance, usually between 15 pf and 20 pf. That means it can vary from 5 pf to 15 pf or from 5 pf to 20 pf. So this is the one I'm using. So let's start with this one first. If we are using a 15 pf variable capacitor, we can use these tools to calculate what inductance is required to cover 88 megahertz. Calculated result is 0.21 H micro Henry. Now let's put uh, 0.21 H micro Henry into the table and change the capacitance to the lowest value of 5 pf, and this gives us one. 52 megahertz, enough to cover all the FM frequency range and even the aviation channel. Thanks for some of the forum members, we got a more accurate calculator to calculate the FM coil required. So these two, you need to measure the thickness of the wire and also the total length of the coil. Our coil will have five turns, excluding the one extra turn for the antenna, so we input five. The coil diameter is the same size as an AA cell, plus the thickness of the wire, so it's 16 mm. Then we'll try different values of the coil length, make sure we find the matching inductance. So the one we find matching is 20 mm. Then we keep click calculate, and it gives us 0.228 microhenry. We need around 0.21 microhenry. This is a bit bigger, but it's okay. We, we must go higher but not lower. The second type of variable capacitor you can find on the market is those that vary from 5 pf to 25 pf or from 5 pf to 30 pf. So if you've got this bigger capacitance, here is how you can calculate. We input 25 pf as capacitance. The frequency will take 87 MHz and then we find out that is required 0.131 microhenry for inductance. Now let's change our capacitance to 8 pf and then we'll get 155 megahertz. That means this LC combination will give us a frequency range from 87 megahertz to 155 megahertz which is enough to even cover the aviation channel. Let's fit it into this coil inductance calculator. So our number of turns is 5. The coil diameter is the same size as the AAA cell, which is a bit smaller than AA cell, 12 mm, including the thickness of the wire, which is 2 mm. And then we input the coil length to try and match with the inductance. And after a few trials, we find 21 mm is close enough. We click calculate and we got the inductance of 0.133 microhenry, close to 131, which is okay. Now we need to make the coil using either 1 mm, 2 mm, or 3 mm bare copper wires. I find it's best using thicker wires, 
three millimeter wire will be the best, but it's too thick to turn. So taking the middle ground two millimeter is the wire I will be using. Also needs the form or the mold, so you can wind your wire on top and then later take it out of it. Uh, for 15 pf variable capacitor, you need a bigger coil, so you use the AA cell, AA battery as your mode. For 25 pf variable capacitors, you need a smaller coil, so you use the AAA cell as your mode or form. For my crystal radio, I'm using 15 pf variable capacitor, so I'll use the AA cell as the mode, and then I'll just wind six turns. After the winding, you can measure the total coil length and contract or expand it to the ultimate length you need. We'll be using the same 3DQ Universal Crystal Radio module as before. If you look at the left side of the diagram, there are two antennas, antenna 1 and antenna 2. If you're using it as a portable device, you just need to connect antenna 1 to a telescopic, that means extensible radio antenna, which is 1.2 meter long or above. If you want to use it in-house, you better have a Yaji antenna, those antenna that are used for television set, but there's a special one for radio as well. We can make one yourself. Uh, I can show you how to do it. Uh, that one has two entry points. First entry point connect to antenna 1, second entry point connect to antenna 2. Antenna 2 is actually the same point as the tapping point for the 3DQ detector. The coil has total 6 turns. The first 5 turns is connecting in parallel to the variable capacitor so we can tune the entire FM frequency range. There's a tap after one turn from ground that connects to the 3DQ as a detector input. There's one turn after ground that connects to antenna 1. Receiving FM crystal radio is an art and a fine art. You need to be very close to your FM transmission station. So usually less than 3 kilometers will be best if you are Further than that, the chances are you will never be able to hear anything. So if you have created a portable radio, try to trans transport that uh, close to the transmission station to test. Otherwise, there will be no magic. FM crystal radio can only receive within a very short range, three kilometer. Uh, that's the maximum. Otherwise, you have to pull up your own Yaji antenna which is very long total 1.6 meter long you may not have space in your house to do that but if you do uh, watch my next video I, I'm going to show you how to make one so you can listen to the FM crystal radio in-house as well this is the 3DQ universal crystal radio module we have created before so we'll continue to use it we'll find a small box plastic box is alright uh, if you Concern about sealing, you may want to find a metal box as well. So drill some holes. We we'll just secure our 3DQ crystal radio module by screwing up the earphone jack screws. Then we need to drill another hole for the variable capacitor. Mount it into the box so it can uh, spin freely. We'll need to add an insulator knob, otherwise when we touch the uh, tuner handle, frequency range will be shifted when our hand is moving away from it. Next we need to drill two small holes for the antenna connectors. We have two antennas, so two holes. 
then we'll start making the connections as you can see we need a number of copper wires to make the connection don't use fin wires otherwise the signal will be deteriorating the wire in the middle is the tapping point of the crystal radio module we connect to the tap on the coil and then to one of the antenna and then the wire at the bottom is the top or the hot point of the coil and the variable capacitor why at the top is the ground it connects to the part of the variable cap where it spins and it also connects to the ground of the coil I hang a self-made DIY Yaji FM antenna over my window my window is made of aluminium frame so it will do the work of the director and also the reflector with the um, radiator that is this copper pipe in the middle so the copper pipe is 15 millimeter diameter it is an elongated C shape total length 1.5 meter the two joints in the middle will be connected to my crystal radio as the antenna 1 and antenna 2 because this video is recorded without amplification so you need to turn up the volume before you can hear the testing I also tested winding the coil with a 3mm copper wire and the output is a little bit stronger, a bit louder than that one I made with a coil made of 2mm copper wire. Next I also tested making the coil using 1mm copper wire. As expected, the output is a bit lower than a 2mm copper wire. Thanks for watching. If you like the video I made, please help me by subscribing. I'm trying to get over 1000 subscribers. Please send it to your friends so they can subscribe too. See you next time.